Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Gunfire erupts at a crowded gas station. Three men rush to the hospital. The night cam has the surveillance video showing it all unfold. A man starts throwing punches inside a popular Macomb County restaurant after he was repeatedly asked to put on his mask. Tonight, police need your help finding him. And a Walled Lake teacher out of a job tonight after tweeting support for President Trump. Good to have you with us tonight at 11 on a story now making national headlines, though it is unclear if that Trump support is the reason the district fired Justin Cacera. Yeah, Jason Colthorpe has been investigating tonight and he's live at Walled Lake Western where Cacera was also a coach. Jason, good evening. Good evening, Kim. He was JV basketball and varsity baseball. And Cusera, the 28-year-old teacher formerly of Wald Lake Western here, says he apologized to the school for the attention the tweet got, but not for the tweet itself because, as he says, it wasn't political. Social media cost Justin Cusera his job as an AP World History teacher at Wald Lake Western. On July 6th, after retweeting the president that schools should be open in the fall, he tweeted this, I'm done being silent. Donald Trump is our president. And I just felt like there's a lot of people who are rooting for him to fail just because they don't agree with his policies. So it was meant to be unifying in that sense. In the comments, he tweeted and later deleted, liberals suck. He says he was summoned via Zoom by his principal and HR to explain the three tweets and later was given a choice, resign or be fired. Monday, he got this voicemail. You are choosing not to resign, so we have moved forward with termination. If we can't live in a world where we know somebody disagrees with us politically and have a conversation or even just move on with our lives, that worries me. And the fact that it's, it could lead to termination and, and things like this, that, that does worry me. Walt Lake Consolidated wouldn't comment on a personnel matter, but said in a statement, these are difficult times in our community and across our country. When issues arise, there's a temptation to view items through the lens of our fractured political discourse. Wald Lake encourages students and staff members to engage each other with mutual respect and civility. Tuesday at the Wald Lake Western baseball field, some of Cusera's now former players were practicing. They stand behind him and say he's being singled out. It's unfair how many other teachers like yeah. mm -hmm. show the other side and like Nothing they'll happens, have entire so. class periods against like Republicans and Trump. Like they won't even teach that day. They'll just bash Trump and like the other side's views and that doesn't get talked Nothing about happens. ever in school. But then one teacher brings up Trump on Twitter and he's fired for it. Whether it's coaching or whether it's in the classroom, that's gonna be the biggest uh, loss that I'm gonna feel from this is just not being able to, to see the kids. Yeah. Now the superintendent, Ken Gutman, was quoted as saying that Kucera was not fired for his support of Trump. And someone reached out to us to say there were several other tweets Kucera had posted that were disparaging but were later deleted. He denied that and he said if it was true, someone would have had screenshots of those as well. In Wald Lake, Jason Coulter, Local 4. Yeah, Jason, you're right. I can't help but wonder if these tweets were the only reason he was fired. Is he uh, talking more about that or considering a lawsuit even maybe? Well, he said it's not about the money right now, and he doesn't want to sue his own district. It's not just where he taught. It's where he graduated as a student. Uh, all that said, he, he just is focused on getting his story out, talking about it. But uh, I think it, between you and me, yeah, I think he's considering it down the line. We'll have to wait and see, though. Kim? Okay. Jason, thanks. Three people rushed to the hospital tonight after a gunman opens fire at a West Side gas station. Our Tim Pamplin just received the surveillance video showing the moment those shots were fired. He's on the scene with the night cam. Tim. Detroit's gun violence continues this evening. This is Seven Mile and Grand River, Detroit's West Side. Bullet casings mark where the shooting took place. We got the video. Take a look right there. The bottom of your screen, you see a Kia Sedona and a Ford Focus. Three people in that Ford Focus. The man gets out the driver's seat. There you see him on the bottom of the screen. He's the driver of that Kia Sedona. He has conversations with the three men inside that Ford Focus. I'm being told this conversation started a couple of blocks away. This is where it ended. Again, take a look at the bottom of your screen. A young shotless man hops out that Kia Sedona, guns blazing, filling that Ford Focus with bullets. 
The three men managed to get away from here. Fortunately for them, Beaumont, the old Botsford Hospital, just a few miles north on Grand River, the shooter then runs through. You can see how crowded the gas station is. His friend then takes off in the Kia. He hops in the passenger seat and they're gone. But again, police are looking for this man tonight. If you recognize him, recognize that silver or white Kia Sedona, please do give Detroit police a call. They want to get this guy off the streets ASAP. That is the scene right now on the west side with the night cam. Tim Pamplin, local four. What a look at it. All right, Tim, uh, we just received, by the way, an update from police. One of the victims is in critical condition. Uh, two others right now in serious condition in the hospital. Wow. All right, let's <laughs> check in with Ben as we have some storms headed our way. Let's find out when those storms are due to arrive. Ben? Yeah, we've been tracking these all night long, guys, on Storm Tracker 4. They've remained off to the south, and that's where the roughest stuff is going to stay. It looks like we're probably going to get some rain off of that, but the stronger, more intense thunderstorms are going to stay to our south. So here's a look at radar, and you can see down there in northern parts of Indiana, that's where those thunderstorms are going to stay. But we get into tomorrow, after a little bit of a break tonight, we're looking at a marginal risk for severe weather, and this is for the development that's going to come in the afternoon tomorrow. But starting out, getting out the door tomorrow, we're going to be dry, dry as far as the rain's concerned. You're going to notice that humidity start to spike even higher, muggy and even to tropical levels during the day tomorrow. High temperatures are going to stay in the mid 80s, but we will start seeing those thunderstorms pop in the afternoon. So we'll talk timing on those and see if we've got any more coming into a hotter weekend all in a few minutes. Guys. All right, Ben. Back to more surveillance video because tonight Utica police need your help in identifying a man who caused quite a scene and attacked employees inside the popular Black Rock restaurant on Hall Road. This video shows what went on inside the restaurant. Mara McDonald live in Utica and Mara, both the manager and another employee ended up being punched in the face. Devin, they were, and you know, here's the thing. This restaurant is doing everything it can to keep its workers and its customers safe. They've lowered their density. If you're waiting for a table, they ask that you wait outside, that you only come in the lobby and stand on little, you know, X's when your table is ready. Hand sanitizer all over the place. You're required to wear masks. They have this whole protocol. Well, on July 10th, a group of nine people rolled in here and ignored it all. The surveillance video you see here is the end of what turned into a nightmare for workers at Black Rock. A man refusing to put his mask over his nose and mouth starts throwing punches. Tonight, the Utica police ask, if you know him, they'd like to hear from you. It appears that he hits the manager. The manager hears the commotion, comes up front to remove the gentleman and wanted him to just leave. And that's when the manager got hit. One of the bartenders came over to help settle things down and one of the bartenders got hit as well. This all started when a group of nine people came into the restaurant, didn't check in or follow any of the COVID protocols in place and headed to the bar. Four weren't wearing masks and there was no social distancing going on. They were told they couldn't stay at the bar and to please put their masks on. Some did, but one of the group became belligerent, so much so the manager had to call 911. He was hurling expletives at the female staff and refusing to put the mask on. That's when he started punching and then taking off prior to the police arriving. They're just trying to keep everybody safe right now. They're trying to do what the governor wants them to do to keep the patrons safe and I, I don't think the request to put his mask on was unreasonable. Back here live, police are working on trying to identify the man you see in that video. Apparently, according to those close to this, we're investigating it. At least some of the people in that nine person group are familiar to people here. So they have an idea who was here. They just need to ID who this guy is. If you know who he is, the PD would like to hear from you. We're live in Utica tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Oh boy. All right, Mara. Uh, we've got some breaking news out of Chicago tonight. 14 people have been wounded during a shootout that happened at a funeral. Witnesses say a speeding car opened fire on a crowd of people attending the funeral. Several people in the crowd then returned fire. All 14 victims, we are told, are adults. Still unclear whether all 14 were attending the funeral or if some were uh, just passers-by. But the mass shooting comes just hours after Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot confirmed federal agents are being sent into the city to try to help curb the violence. The Northville School Board voted tonight to remove the board president following his controversial comments about the coronavirus pandemic. Matthew Wilk recently shared a post on Facebook suggesting the pandemic is a hoax. 
During tonight's meeting, the board voted to remove Wilk following public comment that first began last night. His removal comes after a petition demanding his resignation collected 4,000 signatures. Today, the state reporting 573 new cases of COVID-19. That is a little bit of an increase from yesterday, and nine more Michiganders have died from the virus. Today, President Trump updated the federal government's response to the pandemic, urging Americans to wear masks. We're asking everybody that when you are not able to socially distance, wear a mask, get a mask. Uh, whether you like the mask or not, uh, they have an impact. Some areas of our country are doing very well. Others are doing less well. It will probably, unfortunately, get worse before it gets better. Something I don't like saying about things, but that's the way it is. It's the way, it's what we have. This marked, by the way, the president's first coronavirus briefing since late April. Tonight, the superintendent of Detroit Public Schools is responding to a federal judge's ruling that all summer school students be tested for COVID-19 in order for in-person learning to continue. Superintendent Nikolai Vitti released a statement late tonight that reads in part, quote, although we are opposed to the federal judge's order, we will comply to provide our students and families with the face-to-face -face instruction services that they are legally entitled to receive. These tests will be done at school to reduce the burden on parents if their consent is given. Results will be returned in 30 minutes. The city says the ruling means more than 600 students will have to be tested within the next five days. Tonight, a Detroit man is charged in the Coney Island shooting that left three people dead. Mickey Dane Douglas charged with three counts of first degree murder in a shooting at the A Eagles Coney Sunday night. Three people were killed. Another was wounded. Police say Douglas was on probation at the time for other crimes. He'll be in court for a formal arraignment tomorrow morning. Also today, charges filed against an Amazon delivery driver whose arrest in Warren ended up going viral. Jalen Bond was illegally parked last month when an officer approached him asking for an ID. Police say he refused 10 requests to provide identification. Well, that led to a confrontation and arrest that was caught on camera. Bond is charged with failing to obey an officer's order and operating without a license. Both are misdemeanors. Black Friday may be months away, but the pandemic is already impacting one of the busiest shopping days of the year. Yeah, we'll have a look at the changes retailers are already making ahead of the holiday shopping season. And a serial rapist preyed on college students for nearly a decade. New tonight, the big breakthrough that led police to a suspect. We're coming up first, Cedar Point announcing big changes to its safety guidelines less than two weeks after reopening to the public. We've got that next.